Shalom, shalom, shalom. I need Yehuda Hayorah. I'm Judah the Shooter. Back at it once again. Just got done doing some videos. Well, I just did one, uh, you know, yesterday. Um, the first Timothy uh, 5 and 8 myth. Matter of fact, let me um, show my screen really quick. For those of you who are new to the channel, go ahead and smash the like button. Uh, hit the bell. Um, I'm about to start dropping more videos. And it's about to go down, y'all. It's about to go down. So the main thing I've been dealing with, you already know, uh, the polygyny topic. Um, that has been a, uh, a topic that just cannot not be discussed in Israel, uh, dealing with the anti-poly community. So I've just been dealing with uh, different scriptures one by one. Uh, as you already know, um, I started on my rampage with the first Corinthians 7 and 2. Then I turned around and dropped the concubine versus concubines video then i turned around and dropped the q a video with me and two of my brothers then i uh turned around and did uh what was the next one uh the exodus 21 uh 10 and 11 uh i actually uh if you see right here up top uh that's the part two so those two have to go together even though i didn't drop them in order uh but then i end up dropping the romans 13 one the laws of the land you gotta follow then i did the uh lawful but not expedient when um one of my favorite ones, uh, multiple wives in the same house. I dropped that one. Um, and then uh, the latest one I did uh, was the first uh, Timothy 5 and 8 myth. You know, uh, it's been getting great feedback. Uh, definitely saved some marriages that I personally know of. Um, so a brother who I know, he reunited with his wife after, uh, well, almost about three years, I want to say. And um, she had left him, y'all. She left the brother because of first timothy 5 and 8 and exodus 21 10 and 11 she was looking at him like man he's an infidel and uh the, the description second corinthians uh six chapter about um uh, about an infidel and you know verse 17 you know um come up among them be separate so she looked at uh second corinthians uh six uh 14 through 17 and she looked at it like oh snap uh, he's an infidel first timothy 5 and 8 He's an infidel, you know what I'm saying? So, and get this, sisters shared these scriptures with her. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, brothers, be careful who you have your sisters, uh, your wives hanging around because a lot of these sisters are dragons and uh, they obviously, you know, are not fit to uh, teach the scriptures. But then you got some brothers that's teaching this false doctrine too. You know what I'm saying? So um, I've been getting a lot of great feedback. So I'm gonna keep it coming. Um, the next one that is, on the table oh guys and i hate that i'm about to say this but i don't but it gotta get dealt with and it gotta get addressed so the next one that we're going to deal with as you see we just got done dealing with first timothy 5 and 8 um which basically says uh if you provide not for his own especially if they have his own household he's denied the faith and it's worse than an infidel so we went over that scripture um the context of it and everything i went over the whole chapter but this next one, yeah, look, wait a minute. This next one is, I'm kind of, I hate that I got to go over this one, but I actually do because it's been, guys, it's been getting out of hand. And um, one of my brothers actually asked me about this uh, question or whatnot. Uh, um, I ain't going to say his name, but um, you know who I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? My brother asked me about this scripture. So uh, he's one of the reasons why I'm doing this scripture. Uh, not that he believed it, but uh, number one, we uh, know some people that actually uh, believe this scripture to be talking about poly. So it's nothing against them because I don't want people to think, like, oh, this is personal. It's not personal. But believe it or not, I've had other people to ask me about this scripture because we do have a lot of the same people that runs in the same circle so i've got asked about this scripture actually but uh one of my brothers just recently asked me about it um i'm gonna just say we you know what i'm saying uh shalom we um but yeah so we we were talking about this and uh, i told him you know I, um i'm gonna drop some videos on this so guys again i hate that i gotta do this one um guys i hate i gotta do this one because the reason why is because when we go over this it's like if you were to just read this, it's like, well, who actually thinks and believes this? You know, so believe it or not, the scripture that we about to go over, people believe that this is actually talking about 
polygyny. It's ridiculous, but it's not. So we're going to go ahead and turn to Proverbs, the 27th chapter. Proverbs 27 chapter. Let's go ahead and get there, guys. About to go ahead and get it in. We're going to be starting in verse 23. And we're going to read that out. You know, so, hey, they got to do it, but hey, it is what it is. You know, so, ladies and gents, uh, I guess we got to deal with it, right? One second. All right. So, Proverbs 23, I mean, Proverbs 27, verse 23. And as you see, I have Proverbs 27, verse 23 to 27, has nothing to do with pollution. Call the formers up <laughs> and share this with them. You know, and you'll find out why I'm saying that. You know, call the formers up and share this with them. You know, it has nothing to do with it. One second. All right. So, even when starting off, you know, it says, um, Yadoa te, um, te da. So, in other words, uh, you should know pene or neha. Pene, it can mean face, uh, if you will. It can mean countenance. It can mean appearance. Uh, then we have the word oineha. All right. So, uh, dealing with the, uh, hold on, wait one second. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So, yeah. Um, um, so, you should know the condition. Then you have the word oineha of your flocks, if you will. Then we have the word. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, then it has the word sheet, which is mean put. The word libcha, which has the root word lab, which means your mind or your heart. Then we have the word laarari, which will be your herds, your flock. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So the yeah, your your, your flocks. So um, um, yeah. So it's dealing with your flocks and your herds, if you will. So um, when you are when you're putting your heart, right? into your flock if you will this means you're looking out for their well-being you know looking out for the world being and making sure that they're good matter of fact you know what i'm going to do no i'm going to pause i'm going to go ahead and deal with this in english first then i'm going to go ahead and um deal with it in the uh in the hebrew text all right so i'm going to do that yeah i'm definitely going to do that first um and just kind of bear with me because you know i basically freestyle these videos so kind of bear with me so um, yeah, I'm going to turn this into English really quick. Uh, how do I do it? Uh, um, where are you? Um, here we, oh, here we go, right here. Sorry about that. Okay, English. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do this in English first, and then I'll go ahead and deal with the actual Hebrew text. All right, deal? Great. So let me go ahead and uh, I can actually stop video and actually just share my screen like that so yeah okay so as you already know we're in verse 23 all right so once again guys it's another scripture that i actually have to deal with people are taking this out of context um gosh y'all uh, this is really embarrassing actually um you don't have nothing to do with poly all right we're talking about a goat y'all basically <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and deal with it so Verse 23, it says, be thou diligent to know the state of your flocks and look well to your herds. Hmm. So what do we get from here? Right? Let's read it once more. Can we do that? Sure. Be thou diligent to know the state of your flocks and look well to your herds <laughs> yo <laughs> this is clearly saying be diligent aka be sure to know the state aka the condition as we were saying earlier the word pen, um pene which can mean face appearance you know what i'm saying um when you know the appearance i mean you're looking up on it right and then it says uh libcha, um you know with your heart you know as so we just got in reading the hebrew all right so in other words um, in other, in a sense, you see that you're you're getting on the state of the condition of your flocks, you know what I'm saying? And it said to look well into your what, your herds, right? Now I hate that I got to do this, but I have to make it elementary because believe it or not, some people are just not fully understanding what it is that we're reading here. All right, so in case you didn't know, I'm reading from as you see right here. Uh, the app is eSword. You can download this on any laptop. Uh, if you have an Apple device, 
you can download eSword. All right, download the version Bible that you need and the, the concordances. You can look this up as well. So um, if you don't have an Apple device, I believe you can still download what's called My Sword, like M Y, like my, and then the word sword. So not E Sword, but it'll be my as in mind. My sword. So anyway, so it says be diligent to know the state of your flocks. What are flocks? Let's go ahead and click on it real quick. Okay. So believe it or not, this has to get dealt with. So the collective name for a flock of sheep or goats. All right. Also figuratively of men, small cattle, flock, lamb, sheep. There we go. Shearer herds. So now we know this is talking literal flocks, literally. It says, and look well to thy herds. All right. What's herds? Go ahead. Flock herd. Let's go ahead and deal with that. That's the root word. Eder. So it uh, says an arrangement that is a muster of what? Animals. Drove, flock, herd. Got that? Of course you do. All right, this is elementary. So keep this in mind. These are speaking of animals. One who owns animals. Remember it said to um, be diligent to know the state of who? Your flocks. So this is, again, this is one who owns animals. Put this in today's perspective. This would be little Johnny is if he had a, uh, a flock and a herd of animals, which is possible for him to still have today. If he chose to do it, if he chose to do this, guys, keep this in mind. All right. Everyone have flocks and herds today? No, of course not. Everybody does not have flocks and herds today. Everybody don't want flocks and herds today. That's your choice if you decide to do that. It's your prerogative. You can do that if you choose to do so. You're not commanded to have it. You don't have to have it. And you'll find out later why am I saying this? Why am I being so re redundant in this? Why am I keep repeating myself in this? All right. So you can have the day. You choose to do it. Everyone has flocks and herds, like I said. No, no, no. Right? No, everyone didn't have flocks and herds. So again, this wisdom that is being shared. It's for the people who actually have them. People who actually own them. This isn't speaking on polygyny whatsoever. I want to reiterate that. This isn't speaking on polygyny whatsoever. This is for those who have today what we call a farm. A farm. A farm with animals. Specifically, flocks, herds. As we just read. So, Solomon, who wrote Proverbs, is saying, know well the condition of your flocks and give attention to your herds. Let's find out why he said this in verse 24. Can we do that? Sure we can. Verse 24, it says, for riches or treasures, as we'll learn later, because I want to be going to the Hebrew text later. So it says, for riches are not forever. All right. Then he goes into the question, and do the crown endure or to secure to every generation now i want to focus on this verse because it clearly is asking a question about treasures or riches okay which are not forever right of course not you know matter of fact this actually kind of reminds me of uh what's that scripture uh, proverbs 23 and 5 let me grab it real quick proverbs 23 and 5 which says will thou set thy eyes upon which is not question for riches certainly make themselves wings. Wings. And why I say that? I say they fly away as an eagle. See that? So that lets you know that it don't last forever. Why? Because riches will fly away like an eagle. Goodbye. All right? So Proverbs 27 again and verse 24 again. All right? So you see riches are not forever. It flies away like an eagle. As we just got done reading Proverbs 23 and 5. Um, that's what it's saying. So... You who teach in this doctrine, do you have a form with herds for your one wife? Uh, more than likely you don't. All right. But focusing back on 24, for riches are not forever. Not forever. All right. And it says, endure the crown, endure to every generation. Right. We know the crown or the uh, diadem, right? The symbol of royalty and authority. Right. So, in other words, do these kingdoms going to last forever? Huh? 
Of course not. Of course not. These positions are not secure, aka endure from every generation to generation. Much less stable, in fact, that the possessions of farms or animals, or shall I say flocks and herds, if you will, right? Of course. So now let's examine the next verse. And remember, this isn't speaking about poly, polygyny. Nor is this even implying polygyny on a spiritual level, because I've heard that one too. I've been asked about that one as well. So it's not even applying poly on a spiritual level at all, in any way, shape, form, or fashion. All right? So, as we see, riches do not last forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. We know sooner or later, someone to take the crown, someone to take the kingdom, the kingdom be overthrown, if you will. So, of course not, it don't last for every generation, right? What kingdom has stood for every generation? Never, all right? So, we know this. Verse 25, it says, The hay appeared, all right? And the tender grass showeth itself. And herbs, or vegetation, all right? So, it says, And herbs of the mountains are gathered. Hmm. So, wait a minute. More than one way to look at this. One way you could look at this is to illustrate, un, uh, certainly, of riches, which is soon vanishes away, as the tender grass shows itself and is presently cut down, quickly appears, hay, you know, is soon consumed, which we'll talk about later. All right, because I'm actually going to come back and revisit this verse and then I think about it. All right. But again, it's in speaking on polygyny at all. It's the kind of wisdom as for those who have flocks and herds. And there's a piece of the puzzle that I left out on purpose. And I'm going to come back and deal with that later. Because remember, we're talking, we're going to be dealing with this goats keep this in mind <laughs> all right so notice the very verse said and herbs of the mountains are gathered meaning um for the present use of man i'm gonna talk about it. the the present use of your your flocks and your herds that you have are being uh um are being uh made hay or laid up and um or stored up you know um a lot of people don't know it can be used for medicine as well and get this, it's what goats eat. Goats eat it. We'll deal with that later. But think about it. Who's eating hay? Your wife? No. Who eats grass? Your wife? No. Goats do. Goats eat it. All right? So who eating the herbs of the mountain and, and gathering from them? Is your one wife doing that? Huh? No, I think not. Hey, that's going to be going to Walmart or Whole Foods or Snooks or Kroger's or, or Dealbergs or Save-A-Lot. You know, she might be going to McDonald's when she get done reading this. <laughs> but we got to stop this madness because the next two verses is uh, uh, the main point where some people hang on this doctrine. You know, and I'm specifically not moving fast because y'all will be surprised at how many times I've been. this has been brought to me. It's been brought to me on so many times. Can't ignore it. My brother, uh, we was the last straw. He was the straw that broke the camel's back. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do the lesson. Because, believe it or not, people think that this verse is talking about polygyny. And it's not. So, as we know, when the grass is gone and the new growth appears, the herbs and the mountains gather. All right? Verse 26. So, the lambs are for your clothing. That's what it said the lambs for. For your clothing. All right? It says, and the goats, as we were just talking about earlier, are for the price of the what? Of the field. Now, let me be the first to say for those who be pushing this doctrine and try to tie this in with polygyny. Right? And those who keep the feast days. Who be eating Passover lamb and all of that. Do you got a Passover uh, lamb garment? Huh? Are you using that for your clothes? Huh? For your one wife? You doing that? Huh? You going? You ain't going up in no mountain, are you? No, of course not. Huh? It says, uh, in other words, the lambs will uh, provide you with clothing. And the goats, of course, is your price for the shield. But again, I hate to do this, but I have to do this, guys. Again, this sounds crazy. Some people who know this already be like, why is Judy even addressing this? I have to, guys, because I get hit with this all the time. All the time. 
And again, it's laughable to even entertain this, but I got to do it. So again, for those who do not know what a lamb, okay, great. Let's go ahead and look this up. We have the root word kaves, all right, or kaves, because the vet is into, is a, uh, makes a B or a V sound. So you may hear people say kaves or kaves, all right, because it uh, doesn't have a dogish um, like the uh, cough here it takes a dogish, but this one actually doesn't. But that's a different topic, okay? So, um, yeah. So when I look the word for a lamb up, we see to dominate. It says a ram that's old enough to butt. Then we have lamb sheep of course and again i hate that i'm bringing this up all right hate that i'm bringing this up so again we see a ram is just old enough to butt you know how to be boom crash into each other yeah of course lamb sheep again so the wool of lambs or sheep as many versions would render it all right of its clothes is made and that um a garments to be worn to keep decent to keep warm and comfortable um, a lot of people don't know that um, some of our forefathers actually did do this. They used lambs or sheep um, for clothes. All right. Um, matter of fact, um, Job. Yeah, Job, 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 Job. Well, uh, let's go to Job right quick. Job chapter 30. Chapter 30. No, no, no. Chapter 31. Chapter 31, 31. And I'm going to say 19. Boom. Here we go. All right. Great. So Joel uh, chapter 31 verse 19 I'll go ahead and give you a second to get there really quick Because I know I probably went too fast So I'll go ahead and give you about 5 seconds Okay so here we go Joel chapter 31 verse 19 It says if I have seen any perish for want Of what? Clothing Or any poor without what? Covering Alright verse 20 If his loins have not blessed me and if he were not worn, watch this, warmed with the fleece of my sheep. Wow. Fleece with the, if it says, and if he were not warm with the fleece of my sheep, of my sheep. Now, let's look the word up for the word sheep. Remember when we just looked the word up for lamb, right? In Proverbs 27. And it was the word kaves or kaves. Remember that? Let's look this up. Let's see what this says. Uh, same thing, guys. Same thing. See that? See the vet with no doggers? Right? Carved with the doggers. I just said that. Of course I did. Same word. See that? Again, to dominate a ram just old enough to butt, lamb, sheep. And I hate that I'm going over this. Yo, I'm sorry, guys. Hey, you don't waste the time, but I got to go over this. But you better know this because you're going to get hit with this sooner or later. Guaranteed. All right. And one reason you'll find out later why. So it's the same thing as we see. This was talking about clothes. And um, let me go back. In Proverbs 27. All right. 26. As I was saying, this is talking about clothes, right? From a lamb, a.k.a. A sheep, that came from your flock. How do we know? Because look at this. Boom. Came from your flock. Yours, right? Lamb, sheeps, right? It was also used for clothes. Ask those who teach this false doctrine. Are they doing this for their one wife to be the example? No. They probably don't even, they probably ain't even seen a sheep in their real life. A man might even know where to find one. At all. The lamb for your clothing, right? Of course. Lamb for your clothing. I mean your clothing. And then here it didn't talk about the eat, it said for your clothing and the ghosts for the price of the field. So which one of you Israelites or Christians that's hating on men because they got more than one wife or a concubine, even both, is using lamb for clothing? Hmm? Show me how you go outside and kill a lamb and make sure I mean, and make you some clothes. Make sure you show me that. What are they doing that at? Let's see your lamb garment for Passover or whatever feast you will be keeping. Those who keep it that you will be wearing. I'd love to see that. This verse also said again. Um, and the goats are for the price of the field. 
right? Goats are for the price of the field. So clearly we're seeing that these, they're, that they're being brought up, they're being sold. By who? The, obviously a farmer with money to purchase these goats and to get these as a price for the field. That's what you call their farmer. Huh? That's what you call a farmer. Now, which one of you are doing this? Being a farmer, selling lambs and sheep, selling goats. Where's your field? I'm not talking about the small grass that you that you cut every two weeks. Huh? If you do this, you will have goats and milk for your food and for your household and for the life of your girls. How do I know this, you might ask? Because the next verse tells me that. Notice the verse starts off with the word and, which means you have to read before this to understand what is being said. This verse 27, guys, look. <laughs> Let me uh, pull it up. Guys, look. This verse 27 is the verse, the main verse that they actually use to justify this doctrine. All right. I'm telling you, guys, this doctrine is out there. People were teaching this. And this verse 27 is the verse that they're trying to push. All right. Also, goats in this very um, verse is talking about a he goat, um, which we'll be dealing with has a root word, uh, a tood. Um, So let's go ahead and deal with this. Yeah, guys. So I got to go ahead and deal with this. All right. So, yeah, um, here we go. Verse 27. <laughs> um, guys, this is, this is actually crazy. Like, as I'm just sitting here thinking about this, all right, even just looking at this, it lets you know that someone, again, was taking care of these animals. Um, <laughs> this is clearly a farmer, all right? But again, we're going to go ahead and and look at this, because this, this is the main verse they want, y'all. The main verse that, well, read verse 27. Yo. So it says, and thou shalt have goat's milk, <laughs> enough for your food. And it says, for the food of your household and for the maintenance, which is the word lives, actually, because it has a word chai. Is it chai, I believe? Let me see. Yep, chai. Notice it has the word alive right there. All right. Life, because that's the more proper word, living. All right. So, uh, but anyway, it, it really should, it really uh, would say, and for the lives for your maidens, which, the, uh, which we'll deal with as well, the word na'ara, all right, which is uh, girls, but we'll deal with this. But believe it or not, guys, let me put my screen on. Believe it or not, there was a doctrine that teach that this verse that I just read, Proverbs 27, 27, is talking about polygyny. Yes, this is a doctrine. And they teach that basically what you do for one wife, you got to do for the next wife and, and milk for all your maidens. This is what they teach. This is what they teach, guys. It's unbelievable. You would be surprised that this is the doctrine that is being taught. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Let's go ahead and we're going to deal with this. But again, this is the doctrine that is being taught out here. All right. So verse 27 again, and thou shalt have goat's milk, goat's milk, enough for your food, for the food of your household and for the maintenance or the lives for your maintenance. <sighs> Guys. So, and you will have plenty of goat's milk to feed you and your family and to nourish your girls as well. It's what we're going to be learning. And thou shalt have goat's milk, guys. Goat's milk. This is unbelievable. Okay? So, um, yeah. We have goat's milk. So, let's deal with goats really quick. A she-goat, strong but masculine and plural. It says, which also used elliptically for goat's hair. 
she go a kid which we know is a what a baby goat a baby goat understand that she goats were kept for their milk most don't know this some do you can milk a goat all right and um yeah the she goat of course um was daily used for food in our land many don't know look at this female goat she goat all right so during our culture yes we had she goats and uh, they got milked and they were used in our land all right goat keep this in mind <laughs> so everybody's not a goat herder <laughs> if you will all right um, also, even when you look in history, you'll learn even some physicians uh, above others would even use. Uh, um, I mean, I'm sorry that they believe. I mean, some people believe that. Uh, um, I'm tongue twisted. Um, what else to say? Oh yeah, uh, some people believe that. Um, what I'm gonna say, the milk of uh, like breast milk and goat milk is basically uh, next to each other, like meaning like yo, it's they really really good for you. So you know, you get some people that that actually speaks about that. All right. So again, um, this has nothing to do with polygyny at all, at all. So here it is. We have the goat's milk for the house and for the lives of them. With this, you know, you can get cheese, goat milk, etc. You know, your milk, etc. These Negroes who teaching this false doctrine will use it to say, again, what you do for one, you got to do for the next. Meaning, uh, give one a radio got to get the other one a radio too and as if that's a law what scripture is that at all we just saw that the word for maintenance already also is the word chai which is the word for alive a life which i'll be re uh, reading later all right which i'll be reading later um let me pull it up all right what we had right here the Chaim has the root word of Chai, which actually says life there. All right. Then we have the root word Na'ar, which is a young woman or a woman. All right. Not to be confused with, you have the word Betecha, all right, your house. I'm going to deal with it later. I'm moving too fast. Didn't want to move too fast because, again, this doctrine is being taught and it's being spread around Israel. So, again, this word for maintenance, uh, the proper word, as we'll learn, is the word for life. Basically, you know, sufficient for you to live, which, which again, I'm going to show you out of Hebrew text later. All right. But it also says um, the life of your maidens. What's a maiden? As I was telling you, Na'ar, Na'ar, here, Na'ar, a girl. That's why you kept hearing me use the word girl earlier. It says for in infancy, to adolescence that's when she's like what a teen damsel maiden young woman but what kind of young woman a young girl in other words that's the action so a girl or this young girl is what it is this here is speaking this here is not speaking on a man's wife in this context but again i'm gonna show you out the hebrew text but those of you who watch my videos know i often read straight from the hebrew text and that Again, I'm going to show you shortly. All right. Again, so let's refocus on this verse real quick. In verse 27, it says, And thou shalt have goat's milk enough for your food and for the food of your household and from the maintenance or life of your hand um, or your maidens, which is your girls. All right. That word food is the word lechem, which is bread also as well. Let me click on that. Lechem. Food. A man or beast, especially bread. You know how Christ was born in Bethlehem, which is the house of bread, which is a grain, making it fit for it. So eat food, fruit, loaf, meat, victuals, which is again food, if you will. All right. So when going into the Hebrew text, when I see the words for food, um, it used the word uh um lilamecha, as we'll learn earlier, which means to um uh, two or four your bread is when you're going into the word lilamecha I mean lilamecha is that's what we're reading in the actual Hebrew text wait let me make sure is it lilamecha let me see I can be wrong 
de la mecha. Ya. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, le kha la mecha. Yeah, okay, so yeah, so we we'll definitely be getting to that as well. All right. So, um yeah. But so even in Proverbs the uh, the NIV version, I believe it tell you you have like plenty um of goat's milk to feed you, your family, uh and your uh, your um your servant girls, I want to say. I think that's what it says in the NIV version. Someone pulled that. All right. So these was young women that obviously probably worked for you. This wasn't talking about your wives. It's not Arra at all. At all. This has nothing to do with polygyny. At all. This would be a farmer, if you will. Another clue how you know this in polygyny, because verse 27 again, and you should have goat's milk enough for your food and for the food of your household and and for the maintenance of the lives of your maidens. Well, question. For this word for maidens, because I know that's where y'all hanging on. Um, well, if the maidens was his wife, then why wouldn't they be already a part of his household? AKA family. Clearly we see this makes a separation between the man's household and his maidens there. This makes a separation, which is how another clue that this young woman or this girl, AKA maiden, was a servant, a young woman, not a wife. The best you got is a young woman or, or a young girl that is old enough to get married. If this was if this was his woman as well, they would be included in the household already. It just would have just it just should have said household. That's it. Or wives. Not even concubines didn't say that. This is speaking about goat's milk that was used for food, to drink, to consume. Today, people are going to the store getting a damn gallon of milk. So if you want to use this, and okay, well then, uh, get some milk then. <laughs> or if you want some goat milk, like the scripture spoke on right here, all right, then cool, I can go to Walmart. Matter of fact, hey, let's entertain this really quick. Um, There is a, uh, a company that's called uh, Mayenberg. Like uh, Mayenberg, it's spelled M E. Matter of fact, let me out. Put that right there. Hold on, wait. Manberg. It's M uh, M E Y E N B E R G. Manberg. I wrote that right here. Let me blow it up on the screen. Manberg. Okay. That's the name of the company. And they sell goat's milk. Manberg. All right. That's the company that sells the uh, the goat's milk. All right, let me erase it because it's kind of confusing. Once you you know Hebrews read from right to left, and I put the English in here, then it went from um, right to left. But anyway, um, that company sells goat's milk, but not just any old kind of goat milk. They said it is uh, uh, um, um, grade A goat milk. Grade A, what better than a grade A? And it's easy to digest. <laughs> hey, matter of fact, speaking of this, look, did y'all know that some forms even sell it? Like you can go right to a form today and get you some goat's milk for your wife. If that's the case, then brother. <laughs> Those who believe that doctrine that's being taught. Now, if you want to go further, even buy a goat in the United States, goats cost anywhere from about a hundred to a hundred to like eight hundred dollars, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think it costs about a hundred to eight hundred dollars. Means you can basically be working at McDonald's. You can you can basically be working. Hold on, wait. <laughs> Look, you can basically be working at McDonald's, get you about two to three checks, maybe four checks, stack stack you up some money, and boom, go get you plenty of goats. You can go buy you can go buy goats, right? And then you can set them up in your yard if you want, if you really want to do that. All you need, I think, uh, goats need about, looks maybe about 250 uh, square feet, I think. So it's not a lot. 
you know, and uh, get you a fence about five feet high, um, get you some hay, you know, and boom, there you go, some grass. If you really want to, if you really want to go there, you know, so it's like, yo, <laughs> yo, it's funny to me. It's straight really funny to me. So you want to teach the doctrine? Okay, cool, great. <laughs> now look, y'all, female goes gonna cost just a little more. Just so you know. So, like I said, get your little fence, and boom, you get it going. <laughs> and this is funny to me because it's, well, it's sad too because people actually believe this, you know. But and speaking of that, by the way, it may be a good time to uh, bring the verse twenty-five back up, uh, like I was saying earlier, um, because um, verse twenty-five, uh, as we read, uh, the hay appeareth. And the tender grass showeth itself, and the herbs of your vegetations of the mountains are gathered. So, well, in this case, uh, in case you didn't know, uh, again, like I was saying earlier, goats actually eat hay, and goats eat grass. They can survive off this. They can survive off that alone. And guess what? It's a company called, um, that's crazy that I straight know this. <laughs> but it was a company called um, uh, Kalmbach, I think. And the crazy part about it, um, so I actually started looking at this because actually one of my wives actually um, wants a farm, actually. She actually wants one. And uh, that's something we may do in the future, but that's another topic, though. But um, I remember looking into uh, some of these things. But the, the funny part about it is they got like a 50-pound bag. I want to say 50-pound um, bag. And you can get it for like uh, 30 bucks or like under $30, I want to say. You know, so if you ain't got, matter of fact, if you ain't got your stimulus check yet, like some people didn't, yeah, just go on right ahead and get you some goats and some hay. You know, that costs less than a stimmy, my guy. <laughs> yeah, look, I need to stop this foolishness, you know, uh, taking the scripture out of context, like for real. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I need to really stop doing this. Matter of fact, let me, uh, oh, wait. Okay, here we go. Y'all need to really stop doing this because, again, verse, I'm a Proverbs 21, 20 to 27. It's not talking about no polygyny, you know. So and if that is, hypothetically speaking, talk about polygyny. OK, well, that just means some milk. I can go buy some milk. Baby, you want some goat milk? Huh? We can go in and, and, and we can you want to go get to the farm or you want to go get it for Manberg? Uh, Manberg sell it under 10 bucks. All right. You know, I think it's probably like three dollars, 80, 80 some cent, I want to say. Um, look it up on Walmart. You know, they got it. Mainberg. Matter of fact, let me uh pull it up really quick. All right. Mainberg, goat milk. Oh wait, let me show my screen. I'm sorry, I didn't even show my screen. Let me pull it up. Here we go. Boom. So Mainberg. Here we go. Walmart, sell it. Let's pull it on up really quick. Here we go. $3.94. See, it went up by 10 cents. So, yeah, get you a uh, mang bird, right? Get you some goat milk. Look at this. It says smooth and creamy. Grade A goat milk. Easy to digest, like I was telling you earlier. You get one quart right there, guys. One quart. <laughs> this is crazy. So, they got goat milk right here, as you see. It's a little bit about it. So, guys, if they teaching this doctrine, all right, well, cool then. So, all I need is some goat milk. That's it? Goat milk, right? Come on now. And then when you even look at look at this, who's just drinking goat milk today? Hmm? And it says for the maintenance of the chai, which is the uh, for the lives of your maidens. That wasn't talking about your wife or your wives. The word wife or wives would be the word nashim in Hebrew. In fact, let me show you that. Okay. So, I'll give you an example. Um, let me go to uh, Judges real quick. Matter of fact, before I do, look at this. The word for maidens, right? Look at what it says. Na'ara. Na'ara or Na'era, some would say as well. Now we have Judges. 
uh, about Gideon who had many wives as well. The book of Judges chapter 8 and verse 30. Yeah, it says, And Gideon had three score and ten sons of his body begotten, for he had many wives. Let's see if it says Ne'erah or Ne'ara. No. Look at this. So you have Isha, which is singular, and Nashim, which is plural. It means wives or women, if you will. Right here. Nashim. That's the actual word for women or wives. And if it's in the singular, meaning one wife, it will be Isha. Isha, which is a woman or wife. But here is the word Nashim. All right. Let me show you here in the uh, Hebrew text. All right, Judges 8 and 30, right here. Nashim, or a boat. If you saw my lesson that I did uh, about multiple wives in the same house, I talked about polygyny. And the um, the word for polygyny in Hebrew is actually Nashim Rabot, which means many women or many, this would be many wives. Wives, Nashim, not Na'era. Okay? So here, let me put this right here. Put that right there, boom. Let me uh, make this bigger real quick. For those who don't know the Hebrew language, let me make it bigger. Boom. Now you see that right there? Okay. So this is the Hebrew noon. And the comments, it makes the ah sound. It says na. The shin, because the dot is on the right side. And then this has a hyric at the bottom. It makes an e sound because it has it's followed by a yod. So it says na she. Then you have the final mem or the noon sofit. Sofit comes from the Hebrew word sof, which means final. Goes at the end of a word. In a sense. So it says na shim, na shim. All right. So going to Sefer Mishali or Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27 and verse 27. Here we have the root word. Let me highlight it right here. Na'ar. Na'ar. That's not the same word, guys. Let me blow it up. So if they teaching us talking about wives and polygyny, they're lying. They're a lying. Now get this. Here go your confirmation right here. All right. Same word. This is Proverbs 28, 27. This is the word I just highlighted right here. Na'ar. That's the root word there. Nerotecha. Look at this. Na'ar. As I showed you earlier, a girl. Remember this from infancy to adolescence. Damsel. Maiden. Young woman. So when you see the word young woman or maiden, it's specifically talking about a young girl. Young girl. Look at this. And thou shalt have goat's milk, literally, enough food for the food of your household and for the maintenance of the lives of your maidens. Let's click on maidens. Look at this. A girl. Look at this, guys. Girl, damsel, female servant. Look at that. So this would be, as I said earlier, a female servant or a young, a young female servant who's a girl that worked for this farmer. Not to, has nothing to do with Polly at all. Obviously, if a person is working on a farm and they have sheep and goats and lambs, they're going to have clothes, of course, you know, speaking of back then, and they're going to have enough milk for their household. But what if the person don't want to be a farmer? What if they don't want to do that? Huh? This is literally talking about a farmer. And it's crazy that I got to straight do this. Because people are teaching this and people believe this. And that mess got to stop. That mess got to stop. A lot of people, a lot of brothers are scared to be men and speak up. They're scared to speak up. So what they're doing is they're going into scriptures, trying to twist them to justify their false doctrine. That's what it is, is what they're doing. Because a lot of brothers' wives, you better be teaching that. Or some brothers are jealous because they can't do it. They can't do it. Believe it or not, y'all, these videos are saving marriages. People are bumping heads in their house because they listen to other people with these doctors. People come, Judah, man, question, bro. Hey, thank you so much for making time for me. Yo, what about this scripture right here? 
What about the scripture? Yo, you would be surprised how many times that I've heard this about this uh, Proverbs 27 over the years. Over the years, I've heard this. And I've been hearing it more and more frequently, more and more frequently. My bro, we was the was uh, the last person to ask me about it. Last person asked me about it. Told me he saw a video. Last person saw me. Oh, um, he's the last person asked me about it. I told him, yo, I'm gonna address this, but I don't want to go too fast. I want to do scriptures slow at a time, because I'm gonna start by going doing documentaries like I did um, in the past. So, but anyway, Proverbs 27 is not talking about Polly at all and hypothetically speaking even if it was talking about poly polygyny which is not then this will be a poly man who owned a farm you're not commanded in the bible to own a farm you're not commanded in the bible to own a sheep a goat or a lamb at all there's no law that teaches that at all has nothing to do with it Nothing to do with it. Joe the Shooter. Here is the channel. Again, went over First Timothy 5 and 8 a day ago. A day ago. Uh, multiple wives in the same house. People teach that that's a sin. Can't do that. Genesis 31. Jacob and his wives had their own tent. Wait till you see that video. Wait till you see that video. Ooh wee. You better not watch it. Exodus 21 is the laws on polygamy. As they see. You better not watch this video. This right here. This Exodus 21, 10, 11 polygyny myth. Ooh wee. You bet not. Bet not watch that. Gotta follow the laws of the land. Romans 13. You better not watch that video either. Ooh we. A concubine is only a slave. Or it gotta be somebody of another nation. Better not watch that video. You can't have more than one wife. First Corinthians 7 and 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. It's his own wife. You better not watch that video either. Ooh we. Nope, nope, nope. You single sisters. Yeah, watch that one. She has no hedge. And she's rebellious. Watch that one. Watch that one. Sisters, stop using this verse and bringing it back to your husbands. Your husband's coming back and reporting it to me. And he asking me about this. So now I got to go and address this. Man, my wife, man, she seen something. Somebody told her this. What you think about this, Ock? Proverbs 27? What the heck? They ain't got nothing to do with no polygyny. What the? What? What you talking about? Why are you even asking me this? This is retarded to even, even entertain this. But got to get done. And I'm not done. There's more videos that I'm going to be dealing with and more videos. I'm going to be bringing out more scriptures that I'm going to be addressing. More that I'm going to be addressing. More I'm be addressing. But again, definitely check out the channel youtube.com slash Judah the Shooter. This is my newest YouTube channel. Definitely check this out. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get the notifications when I drop more videos. And um, I'm going to go ahead and um, drop this for you in the Hebrew text as well. You know, I want to actually read it out. I don't get a chance to do that a lot, you know. Read it out of here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Matter of fact, hold on. But that's what I'm gonna do, guys. So that you know, y'all can get some understanding, and hopefully, hopefully, those who've been teaching this doctrine can come up off that nonsense and start teaching the truth about the actual pa um, passage, because it has nothing to do with Polly whatsoever. Here we go, Proverbs 27. So I'm gonna be reading from Proverbs 27. All right, starting in verse 23. All right. Starting in verse 23 is what I'm going to be reading from. So, um, yeah. I'm going to be reading from that. We're about to go ahead and get it in. Use my phone to zoom it on in so you can see it closely. And that's what it is. 
I need Yehuda Hayora. Next clip. And to the next episode. Shalom. Here we go. Ya do te da pene o necha, sheet libcha, la rarim. Kilo le olam chesin. Ve im nedzir le dor dor o ve dor. Gala chazir ve nira de se. Ve ne esfu esvot harim. Kevashim lil vu shecha. Um khir sare aturim videi khalif ezim lelach mecha lelechem betecha ve chayim which we'll be dealing with later of course lenarot techa which we'll also be dealing with as well alright so now that we have this I'm gonna try not to go too fast. So, as you already know, this is a Sefer Mishli or the Book of Proverbs. All right. So it's letting me know that um, you are to know the face of your flocks or the condition of your flocks. All right. So when you know the face, the the appearance, you know, you're, you're checking it out. You know exactly what's going on. All right. So this is somebody who is. Um, definitely watching over them all right but how do we know because it says sheet which means put uh libcha the root word is lab which is your heart or your mind cha which is yours um then we have la arari all right so let me know that this is somebody who is putting their all into it, putting their heart into it into the what into the herds all right the flock if you will so this is uh, what you know as a farmer, of course. All right. So, yeah. Then we have the word kilo leolam chesin. Oh my bad, I didn't want to go too fast. Um, so, ki, which is for lo, which is in the negative, which is not or neither. Leolam chesin. So, for treasure. Um, basically, let me know for treasure, it don't last forever. It don't last for an eternity. All right. So, um. Um, riches or ma mainly the word treasures, it, it yeah, it doesn't last forever, all right. So then we have the vein and if one does and the zir, which is a crown, all right, which is um, yeah, crown. Then we have the word le dur, dur or vador. So asking, does it last from generation to generation? We know that answer is a flat out no, you know, it does not last from generation to generation. So we have the word gala. Um, which is it can mean like he exposes or shows, but is um, in a um, a more plainer sense we have the word gala hazir, um, gala hazir, and then we have um, venira de se. So that lets me know um, basically when the green grass is grown, um, yeah, when the green grass is grown, and uh, let me know uh, and appears of course. Um, then lets me know here and they are gathered but what is gathered we have um your um so i got a tongue twist uh this would be like for herbs you know vegetation if you will herbs you know which of course goats eat harim which of course mountains you know which is kind of funny because you actually even even got mountain goats too <laughs> but um yeah so that's basically what this actually i'm um, speaking about there guys now, after speaking of goats, now we have here kebashim, which is a lamb. All right, lamb. All right, lamb, sheep. Then let me know it should be your clothes, clothing for you. All right, umachira, which is uh, the price of sade, field. All right, field. All right, then we have atudi which is a male goat, all right? The male goats will be the price of the field for you, all right? So you have the male goats will be the price of the field, all right? Then you have your lamb, your sheep, or your clothing, all right? So now, last but not least, um, yeah, you know, as I said, I didn't want to go too fast. So we have the day, which is uh, in enough of, if you will. So 
Uh, and just remember, guys, this is Proverbs 27. All right. So we have an enough of. Uh, the next word is the word chalev, which is uh, an enough milk, if you will, for milk. Then we have the word izim, uh, which is goats. So let me know this is um, an enough of uh, goat's milk, if you will. So we have goat's milk, literally, literally goat's milk. All right. So this is basically what I've been sharing, if you will. So goat's milk. All right. So now we have the next word. What about the goat milks? Letting you know for your food, if you will. And then not only that, and food of for your household, in other words. And the life. Because this word here is the word chai, which means life. Alive. Oh, the lies. Of who? Of your young girls. The word na'ar is the root word for a young girl. All right, young girl. So the thing is, we have your house here or your household, but then we have Na'arot. So this is your household, but this is separate. This is separate. Na'ar is a young woman. So this ain't talking about a wife or polygyny because if it was, then she would be here in the household already. So this is someone separate outside of your household. Hmm. Female worker, if you will. So this would be your family. Over here, this isn't. This is more so of your female servant, if you will. So, again, Proverbs 27 is not talking about no polygyny at all. At all. At all, guys. So the lambs will be for your clothes. The goats will be the price of the field. There will be enough goat's milk for your food. <laughs> for for your lives. Um, I mean, yeah, for your, for your food, for your household, and the lives of your girls. Your maid, your maidens, as the uh, King James Version says, but that's more properly for your girls, if you will, for their lives. So this has nothing to do with no polygyny at all. Just figured I'd share that with you. All right. And if one is saying, oh, well, that means your wives. Well, no, it doesn't doesn't say that in the text at all and if that was your wives meaning these women are your you know your possessions if you will even your concubines if you will they would be a part of your household mm. something to think about <laughs>